Welcome to the EndNotes, where I put all the fun facts I can't fit into the main videos. Today some extra bits of information from my video about the word education, and if you haven't seen that yet, click on the card. In that video we discussed the word university and its etymology from Universitas Magistrorum et Scholarium, the Union of Masters and Scholars, but we didn't discuss the word college, which can have different meanings in British and American English. From the Latin word caligura to collect, the Latin word collegium or its English derivative college could refer to various types of collective groups. In an academic context, the first colleges, such as at Oxford University, were constituent parts of a university, and began as little more than endowed boarding houses for impoverished students, basically dormitories, though over time the colleges gained more autonomy within the larger universities. Because some smaller institutions weren't divided into constituent colleges, they would sometimes be referred to as colleges themselves, and today in American English, college and university are often used interchangeably. Now as we also saw in the main video, as attitudes shifted after the Middle Ages, the emphasis shifted back to an education that emphasized human affairs with the neoclassical era. Furthermore, with the Protestant Reformation and its break from the Catholic Church, Protestant schools no longer taught Latin as a matter of course, as in the 16th century vernacular schools in Germany, and later the new schools popping up in the United States, which conducted a more practical education. While the first university founded in the US, Harvard established in 1636, was a traditional liberal arts university, in the 18th century Benjamin Franklin founded the Academy and College of Philadelphia, which had a practical curriculum and Thomas Jefferson founded the University of Virginia which promoted secularism and science. And indeed, with the rise of capitalism, we see more of a focus on general skills and vocational education, with science becoming more and more popular in the 19th century and beyond. The ideal citizens that were being produced by these new educational systems were productive economic units. The Americans followed German educational practices not only in terms of teaching in the vernacular languages, but also in terms of progressive educational reforms. For instance, there was Herbartianism, named after German philosopher, psychologist, and pedagogue Johann Friedrich Herbart, which emphasized the importance of individual development to societal contribution, and divided the learning process into the discrete steps of preparation, presentation, association, generalization, and application. In fact, it was perhaps the Enlightenment philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau who first pointed out the importance of understanding how children learn to the process of pedagogy. Rousseau's writings were influential on the Swiss pedagogue Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi and his student German Friedrich Froebel, who stressed that children have unique needs and capabilities. These developments seem obvious now, but they were highly innovative in their day. Froebel's most lasting contribution to education is the invention of kindergarten, meaning literally child garden from the German. Kindergarten made its way to the US when one of Froebel's students, Margareta Schurz, opened a German language kindergarten in Watertown, Wisconsin in 1856, inspiring American educator Elizabeth Peabody to open the first English language one in 1860, and the idea spread. And since we began this video by pointing out the difference between British and American English usage, here too we see a divide, as North American kindergarten is typically called nursery school or creche in the UK. As always, you can hear even more etymology and history, as well as interviews with a wide range of fascinating people on the Endless Knot podcast, available on all the major podcast platforms, as well as our other YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.